Hello friends, Christian here with Brick Life Crisis. Today we're taking a look at a LEGO Creator Expert set. This is the Corner Garage, set number 10264. This is one of the modular buildings that includes 2,569 pieces, including several minifigures, a couple of vehicles, and lots of accessories. Without any further ado, let's crack this guy open and build it up. This is Lego Creator Expert set number 10264, the corner garage. This is the most recent, as of this recording, of the Creator Expert modular buildings. Uh, this set includes a service station, a veterinarian's office, and an apartment. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at each component one by one, starting with these minifigures. The set includes a total of six minifigures. We have the veterinarian, the resident in the apartment, there is a young girl, a cyclist or a moped rider, and then two service station attendants. We'll go ahead and take a closer look at each one of these one by one. And here we have the grizzly old station attendant. You might think of this guy as the station owner, perhaps, but in any event, he looks a little bit older. He's got some whiskers and stuff, uh, and he's got a kind of an old timey hat. Um, the overalls are a nice print, looks like he's got a pencil and some scissors or maybe some socket wrenches or something in his pockets. Uh, no print on the legs or on the back of the figure, um, and no alternate face as you can see, but uh, not a bad figure overall. Next up we have the other station attendant, perhaps she's the station owner. Uh, I really like that hat piece, I've said it before, but uh, the hat hair combo with the ponytail coming out the back is just really superb. I like that quite a bit. It's the same torso as the other guy. Um, she has a nice face. She's a little bit uh, dirty. Looks like she's got some oil or something on her. She does have an alternate face where she's a little bit cleaner, um, but uh, I kind of like this one. It has a little bit of personality. She's not afraid to get herself dirty and get the work done. Next up we have the moped rider. Uh, I really like the torso print on this one with that kind of leather bomber jacket and khaki pants. Some kind of messy blonde hair, some aviator type sunglasses, and then if you take the hair off, this figure also comes with a helmet for riding. So this figure rides the moped, and we'll take a look at that in a moment. But I'm glad that they included both the hair piece and the helmet. Nicely done. And here we have our veterinarian. It's a pretty nice print on the torso and on the face. He's got some glasses and a bit of a mustache, gray hair. Just a bit of subtle print on the back, no alternate face for this guy. Some light blue pants, but a pretty good figure overall. Next up we have this little girl. Uh, she's got a really nice face with those freckles. A cool hair piece with a, some uh, braids coming back into a ponytail. Torso print is nice with a little kitten on it. And that is appropriate because she is bringing her pet into the veterinarian. And we'll take a look at that a little bit closer in just a moment. I almost forgot to mention, she does have an alternate face. You can tell she's a bit worried about her pet, but I think the doctor will be able to take care of everything. And finally, we have the resident of the upstairs apartment. I really like that sweater print. I think the last time I saw that was in the old fishing store, um, but it's a very cool print. Uh, he's got some green pants, nice hair piece, no alternate face for this guy, but the main face is pretty good. This set also includes this dog. Uh, the instructions show him as belonging to the owner of the repair shop. Uh, however, you could easily put him up in the veterinarian's office as well. This set included two vehicles, the first of which is this small scooter. Uh, it's something we've seen before, but I like it in this teal color. Uh, there's a kickstand there that allows it to stand up on its own. Uh, got some decent wheels, headlight, handlebars. Uh, nothing fancy, but it uh, is a nice extra inclusion. And here we have the service station tow truck. This was a pretty cool little build. Uh, I like this quite a bit actually. Six studs wide altogether. Um, we have this little suggestion of a bumper on the front with a couple of headlights, a big beefy grill. If we take off the hood, we can see some engine detail underneath as well, which is very nice. Uh, we can also take off the hood and then you can see inside there's room for just one figure with a steering wheel there at the center. We also have some running boards on either side, along with a suggestion of some rearview mirrors. Uh, the wheels are 
fairly smooth. They do a pretty good job. We have working doors, open and close. And then back here we have the tow mechanism. Up here there's a, a knob, and if you turn that one way or the other, it will raise or lower the tow arm so that you can tow a vehicle. They've also included a chain back here to help with that uh, towing. And then we have a rear bumper with some tail lights. A pretty cool little side build um, that is perfectly appropriate for this particular set. So as the name would suggest, this is a corner build. And so, in order to fit in with other modulars, down at the bottom here, we have these Technic bricks with the holes in them. And then you just put a Technic pin in there and that way you can butt this up against another building. And we have the same sort of thing on the other side. And you can actually see the Technic pins in there right now. Here we have an exterior view starting on the one side. And we have this brick built tree, which is a new technique as far as I know. There is a door here with the entrance to the upper floors. Uh, and on the doorknob here, it's a little tough to make out, but there's a printed paw piece. It looks like a, a dog treat or something, well, because that is the entrance to the veterinary clinic. And there's a better look at that paw print for the door. If we just tilt up a little bit, you can see the archway with a landing light there. I really like what they've done with the stoop. It's a pretty good representation of a old time stoop or something that you might see in New York these days. And then the uh, bricks on the side with the thick mortar, uh, they've done a nice job with that. Uh, we move over a little bit, you can see the windows into the service station. It's not lit from the inside of course, so it's a little tough to see, but we'll see if we can get in there a little bit closer. This is a circular drive, or a partially circular driveway, so the vehicles would come in one side and out the other. Um, in the middle, we have an octane uh, gas pump, an old style gas pump. Down in this bucket here, we have a uh, windshield cleaner that is made up of um, an ice skate piece and one of these relatively new uh, one by ones with the bar on it. So that's kind of a, a cool little thing, just a little extra something to add some fun detail. Back over here we can see a push broom and a uh, dolly and then a couple of wheels that are on display. And there you've got a little bit better look at the interior. We've got a wheel on display as well as a stack of some various types of oil or coolant or something like that. And then the front door is pretty basic, just a glass door with a basic knob. And finally on the other side we have the uh, street lamp along with some uh, barriers here just to try and help keep traffic from uh, bumping into the sides of the door. And then the door will open up so that you can roll your vehicle inside and we'll show you a little bit more of that in just a moment. The action on the door is actually presented on the side. So above these wheels that are on display, there's another wheel up here with a little tire on it. And as you turn that, it opens the door. The action doesn't work as well going down. You might have to give it some assistance and just pull it down. But going up, it's nice and smooth. And we have a couple of coach lights just outside, under, or, uh, under the sign and above the door. I really like the look of this uh, drive under kind of a thing. They've got this um, awning or something that uh, covers the entrance. I like that. And we have a printed tile up there. It says Joe's Garage. Uh, by accident we meet. <laughs> That's pretty well done. And then we have this brick built sign over here for the garage with the, uh, the wrench there. Nicely done. Let's go take a look at the interior. Um, this is the interior. It's a little tough to see, but um, there's a cash register with a little bit of cash on the counter there, and then there is a, a tire mounting machine. I don't know what you call that thing technically, but that's made up of one of the new Harry Potter wands uh, to act as the piece that uh, separates the tire from the rim. And then underneath the stairs we have a toolbox. Um, it's not a full complement of tools like I might have expected, but they've got a brick built toolbox with a brick built vise, and then there's a hammer and a wrench, and then over here, we have the uh, vehicle lift, and I'll show you that in greater detail right now. 
So when a vehicle is in need of service, you can just roll right into the station. And with the magic mechanism, which I'll show you in a second, you can actually raise the vehicle up. So as you can see, the vehicle is raised up a couple of bricks worth of height, which allows the mechanics to get underneath it to change the oil or tires or do whatever else they need to do. And around the back, we have the rear entrance. As you can see, we have a can of oil or something there, and then uh, it looks like a recycling bin. But that recycling bin also acts as the mechanism. If you push that in, you probably heard that click, then it raises the arms so that the vehicle uh, can be lifted. So there's a look at that lift mechanism. Right now it's raised, now it's lowered, raised, lowered. So it just raises it up, and it's probably about an inch maybe. Uh, or a couple of bricks in height, but it, it's kind of a cool little play feature. And there's another view of that lift. Um, it, the mechanism works pretty well, and it's hidden fairly well also. Um, my one real complaint about this first floor is it's a little bit plain. Uh, there's no decoration or anything like that on the walls. You'd think that they would at least have a clock, if not some posters and uh, you know, octane type stuff. The Toolbox is cool, but it's a little small. Uh, I don't know, I just would like to have seen a bit more on the interior. And then the floor is all just a studded surface. Uh, I've gotten kind of spoiled with tiled floors lately, so a studded floor is it's okay, I suppose, but I would, I'd prefer a bit more. Here's another view of that tire mounting machine, along with that toolbox behind it. And there's a little bit better look at that cash register and the counter there, along with the window display with the oil cans and the wheel. We have a bit of a spiral staircase, uh, just spiral at the bottom to get up to the main door and then the stairway leading up to the second floor. Speaking of the second floor, let's take a look at that. The second floor is the veterinarian's office primarily which is interesting because there's a little balcony here. I'm not sure why you need a balcony at the veterinarian's office, but that's okay. Uh, as we go around the front, we have some kind of nice bright windows. Uh, it's a little tough to see. I'll try and get a little closer in just a second, but there's a print there. Um, and then as we go along to the other side, we have this nice treatment here with the kind of curved windows. Um, these on either side, the ones that are kind of angled in, it looks like those are actually made up of old vehicle windshield pieces, um, which is kind of a creative use of those parts. And then down here, um, these edge pieces, these are those new slope pieces that are sloped on, on both sides, so they're kind of a, almost like a roof tile uh, for the center ridge of a roof. Um, anyway, that's that. And that is the window print um, for the veterinarian's office. I really like that. Uh, joke there, the Dr. Jones Animal Care, no snakes, Dr. Jones as in Indiana Jones who has a phobia of snakes, I just think that's kind of funny. And this is a bit of the interior, this blank space down here is where you would come up from the lower floor and then you walk into the waiting room and there's a couch and a chair there and there's the macaw on his perch and the flowers. And that's a better look at that print next to the door. Um, that looks to be a map of Heart Lake Village uh, from the Friends line, but it works equally well here, I think. Back here, you can see a fish tank with a goldfish in it. That's kind of cool. And that's a little bit tough to see, but that's about the best I can do with that fish tank with the, uh, the goldfish piece in there. And then there's the door to the exam room itself. When we enter the exam room, we have a desk with a newspaper, some mail, and a coffee mug with that uh, Luxo style lamp. And there's just a little bit closer look at his desk. There's a chart on the wall to help the doctor keep track of his patients. Over here we have an amphibian habitat, I guess, with a heat lamp, a water bottle, and uh, some other stuff there. There is a frog in the amphibian habitat along with that water bottle and some other stuff. And then if we flip around, we can see what is a microscope 
and then some tools. There's some scissors and a syringe down there. Here's a little bit better look at that table with the tools and the microscope. Let's go and take the stairs up to the third level. Before I show you the third floor, I wanted to point out that there is a missing part from this. There should be another one of these pieces right here, but it was missing from my set. Again, starting on the one side, we have a nice set of windows there with some greenery outside. As we move along the front, we have some more flowers and big windows and some nice detailing underneath. And if we come across the other side, we have a similar window setup as we did downstairs. And here we have the kitchen with a stove uh, and on the countertop you can see a clear glass mug, salt and pepper shakers, there's a spoon and a cleaver hanging on the wall. We have a sink with hot and cold taps and a clock. If we move over just a bit, we have the water closet. If we open that door and you can see the toilet inside complete with a toilet paper roll on the floor there, which is kind of a fun detail. And if we turn around a little bit, we have a rock and roll poster or maybe a, a framed record on the wall, along with a, a Lego truck. So this guy is an AFOL and he is displaying his favorite truck piece. Of course, because he's a collector of Lego, he is constantly broke, which means he has kind of a chintzy bed. <laughs> then over here, we have an old school television. Um, the build on that is pretty cool. Um, it's a little thin for an old school TV. It should be a cathode ray tube and that looks more like a, an LED panel or something. But I like the detail with the, the rabbit ears on top. It has a somewhat comfortable looking sofa to sit on. Again, with the other floors and this one, I, I wish they were tiled. Uh, instead of having studded surfaces all the way around, but uh, I guess there's only so much they can do uh, and keep the price at $200 or less. Let's go ahead and take the stairs up to the roof. So this is what the bottom of the floor structure should look like with these rounded pieces. So there should be six of them, one, two, three, four, five, six. And this floor has six, but as I said, the top floor I'm missing one of these, so it's not quite as sturdy as it should be. So I'll be contacting Lego to try to get that replacement. The detailing on the roof area is really nice. I like all of this detail, uh, the architectural elements are really nice. And that continues all the way across. That center cap is really cool. As we continue around, we have a similar theme. On the rooftop, we have a little bit of a relaxing area with this lounge chair underneath the umbrella. And there's a bit of a garden over here with some flowers in it. There's a steam stack or something like that uh, right next to the roof access. And that's just a couple of doors that open up to the stairs that lead down below. Not too bad. Of course, the set also included a brick separator, which can be really handy on some of these larger builds. The manual for this set is pretty massive. It is 290, or I'm sorry, 235 pages and 293 steps to complete the entire build. There's also a, a splash page here advertising the Creator Roller Coaster, the Creator Diner, which is the most recent modular building before this one, and then the Austin Martin for 007. And then we have the uh, part inventory, and then just the typical advertisement stuff. But this is pretty thick. I mean, it's a legit book. It's a, a good sized magazine. Well done. So this set retails for $200 here in the United States, which is, I guess, not too bad considering the piece count, which is pretty impressive. However, this set does not seem to have quite as much life as some of the other recent uh, modular buildings. As I said, the main floor, or the, the first floor with the garage, just seems kind of empty to me. The floors are not tiled, so they just don't have the finished look that some of the others have had. And this had some interesting build techniques. It was definitely a pleasant build. Incidentally, it was about a seven hour build for me with uh, just a couple of small breaks, so not too bad. Uh, I like it overall, I just wish it was a little bit more. 
Um, it's built on a standard 32 by 32 base plate, but you're only taking up roughly half of that base plate because you have that big driveway and the sidewalk area and then the big alleyway kind of back door thing. So there's a lot of space that is not being used for real estate. So with that little real estate to deal with, you would think that they would maybe be able to fit a little bit more detail in there, particularly on the main floor. Um, but not bad overall. Not my favorite of the modular buildings. Uh, from the exterior, it looks pretty good. The interior leaves a bit to be desired, I think. All right, that about wraps it up for this one. This has been Christian with Brick Life Crisis. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave us a like. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those below. And as always, thanks so much for watching. Take care. Bye for now.